hi in this video let's discuss maxillary canines so as you can see here this is 1 3 and this is 2 3 so these canines are present at the corners of the mouth hence they're called as cornered teeth and also as you can notice here a bony prominence along the root of maxillary canine which is called as canine eminence right so this is an important anatomical landmark which contributes to facial aesthetics right and also these canines or cuspids are called as eye teeth because they usually develop near orbital floor so we have a few synonyms here canines are also called as corner teeth and they're also called as eye teeth so apart from this we have another term called as corner stones and please don't get confused with corner teeth and corner stones so corner teeth are canines whereas corner stones are molars because molars are the teeth which are first to erupt so the first permanent teeth to erupt in oral cavity are molars and they usually occupy a position which is in the center of the jaw facial lingually hence molars are considered as corner stones whereas canines are considered as corner teeth right this is very important now let's discuss the chronology of uh, development of canines so canines usually the first evidence of calcification is seen at four to five months and enamel is completed at six to seven years whereas the eruption happens at 11 to 12 years right and the root is completed usually two to three years after eruption that is at around 13 to 15 years there is root closure or root completion now let's discuss few important anatomical features of maxillary canine so of all the teeth in oral cavity canines are usually the longest teeth present so the length of maxillary canine and mandibular canine is 27 mm in case of maxillary canine the length of the crown is around 10 mm whereas the length of the root is 17 mm so the combined length is 27 mm whereas in case of mandibular canines the length of the crown is 11 mm which is 1 mm greater than maxillary canine and the length of the root is 16 mm which is 1 mm shorter than the maxillary canine now coming to the crown you can see here this is a mesial part right so this is a 2 3 so this is a mesial part of the tooth and this is a distal part the mesial part of the crown resembles incisors whereas the distal part resembles premolars right so there is transition happening from incisors and premolars and these teeth are present in the transition zone right and also you can notice here the mesial slope and the distal slope and as evident the mesial slope is shorter compared to the distal slope which is also true in case of premolars except for maxillary first premolar so in case of canines and premolars the mesial slope is shorter than distal slope except for maxillary first premolar where the reverse is true and while i was discussing the length of the crown and length of the root of all the teeth in oral cavity the longest possible root is present in case of maxillary canine which is around 17 mm and canines have maximum mesodistal angulation which is around 17 degrees you can notice that in this illustration here so you can see here the canines have a mesial inclination and this mesial inclination is greatest in case of canines which is around 17 degrees and while discussing a central incisor i didn't mention the point Central incisors are the teeth with greatest labiolingual inclination which is around 28 degrees, right? As you can see here, the labiolingual inclination, teeth are inclined lingually. So, which is greatest in case of central incisors, that is around 28 degrees, right? So, of all the teeth, maximum mesodistal angulation or inclination is found in case of canines, which is around 17 degrees, and the maximum labiolingual inclination is found in case of central incisors, which is around 28 degrees. And coming to line angles and point angles, as I have discussed in case of central incisor, all anteriors have six line angles and four point angles, right? Now let's discuss few other uh, important miscellaneous points pertaining to canines. So canines are most commonly impacted teeth next to third molars, right? And also these teeth exhibit longest path of eruption. As I said, they are developed usually at the floor of the orbital cavity. So they usually have the longest possible path of eruption. And canines are the least common tooth to show bifurcated roots. Also while discussing Central incisors, I mentioned that permanent incisors 
canines and premolars develop from four number of lobes right so even canines develop from four lobes so the minimum number of developmental lobes in permanent teeth is four and this question was asked in Ames May 2012 so these are some of the important points pertaining to canine hope it's clear and try to remember and understand the difference between corner teeth and corner stones and also canine we have few significant important anatomical points pertaining to the slopes pertaining to inclination of the crown and also pertaining to the length of crown and root so maxillary canines we have many points to remember and try to focus on it so that we can cover any multiple choice question pertaining to this tooth. Thank you.